Welcome to this My DocSafe tutorial. In this video, we'll talk about forms, how to build them, and how to use them. You can start a new form by clicking Form from the left hand menu, or by clicking New and Form, and the new form will be created in whichever folder you're currently located in. If you intend to build a form for user portals so that they are available to your stakeholders, we'll cover this in a separate video. So let's click Form and we are presented with a number of widgets to define the form. Start by entering a name for the form, and then we can start entering widgets. We'll just go through each of these quickly. Static text is an announcement, e.g. a caption or subtitle that we can insert between widgets to indicate a new section on the form. For example, to provide more detailed instructions to the user. Short text is a question and answer to the user. For our first question, we'll ask the user to enter the name of the company. Most of the widgets have a width setting to enable us to select how far the widgets extend across the form. For example, if we have two widgets of 50% each, they will be displayed next to each other on the form, enabling us to save space and make the form more user-friendly. We can make the question a required field by clicking Required, which means the user will not be able to submit the form unless this field is filled in. And then we have Advanced Settings. For validation, as this is a text field, we can set the minimum and maximum number of characters. If this was a number field, we could set a range, so the validation condition changes based on the type of field. With pattern, we can choose to only accept answers that match a specific pattern, which is useful if we're asking for something such as social security numbers, or any type of reference that may have letters, digits or slashes in a particular format. To create the pattern, we need to be familiar with regular expressions. Most people aren't familiar with these, but the mechanics are quite simple once they're understood. Just search our help section for regular expressions. The variable field is very useful if using the form as part of a workflow where the data that is input by the user is automatically added to a contract before it's signed. At this point, we would just need to give the variable a name, and we'll cover how to integrate this data at a later point. The variable is also used to define conditional formatting, which we'll explain later in this video. On to the next widget, which is email. This is essentially a question that is pre-formatted within the advanced settings to be set up for a response that is an email. We can change the question to the user here. As we have a few elements added now, you can see we can change the order by dragging and dropping on this handle, and edit the existing elements by highlighting the widget and clicking Edit. We can now change the widget or remove it. Quickly going through the rest of the widgets. Number and date are self-explanatory. Long text is a paragraph response rather than a single line answer. Checkboxes provide the ability to create a question where the user can select a variety of predefined answers. And in validation, we can specify how many checkboxes are required to be selected by the user. Multiple choice is similar to checkboxes, but the user will only be able to select one answer. We can add more options to answer the question and add other option. And in the advanced settings, we can select whether the options are displayed as a radio button or as a drop down menu. Yes, no allows us to specify a question to which the user may only respond yes or no. We then have file upload, where we can ask the user to submit documents. The maximum size for a file is 2 or 3 megabytes. For video, we can embed a video within the form if desired, in order to make the form a little bit more dynamic. We then come to the section widget, which is a very powerful function. This can chain together a series of widgets, which the user can then designate how many clones of these widgets are required. For example, if the form is to collect the details of a company, and we need the user to enter the name and email of all the directors of the company, we can set this as the name for the section, and then tick Allow Users to add more than one entry. We can set a maximum number of entries if required, and then in this instance, add the widget to collect the directors' names, and another widget to collect their email addresses. So when the user encounters this section of the form, they can keep adding entries up to our specified number. And finally, we have an advanced widget called a grid, which allows us to create columns and rows to collect grids of data, 
for example, simple profit and loss numbers, or any other type of grid-based data. So first we name the grid, then define the columns by adding text widgets, for example, 2018, and 2019, and the row label could be revenue. Repeating enables the user to add more than one answer. So if we set this to yes, for revenue, the user will be able to enter multiple rows. Then let's add a second row entitled profit, and we'll set this to not be able to repeat. So the user will only be able to enter one set of figures for profit. We'll just circle back now to show conditional formatting. This is an advanced feature that can show different questions based on the result of previous questions. For example, we can implement conditional formatting on a yes no widget. If we want to ask whether the company is registered in the UK with different questions following from this response, we first create the yes no question. And then we need to assign a variable to the question in the advanced settings, which we can enter as registered. Next, we'd create two section widgets. The first entitled UK registered. And we can input a date widget, asking the user to enter the date the company was registered. and then set the condition field as registered equals equals true. Then we'll create the second section widget titled non-UK registered with a short text widget asking the user to enter the country that the company is registered in. And with this, we'll set the condition field as registered equals equals false. It is required that there are two equal signs here. When we see the finished form shortly, we'll see that the two different questions will be presented depending on how the user answers the first question. We can set widgets other than yes-no to use conditional formatting, but the application is sometimes slightly different. Please see our knowledge base on the subject by typing conditional formatting into the help section. So, once we're happy with the form, we can specify the form options, for example, to receive notifications when someone submits the form and to which email addresses. PDF template is an advanced feature that allows us to turn the form into a PDF document on the fly, but it does require you to know HTML. We'll cover this in a separate video. We can then save the form. And once the form is created, we can see the questions on the left and the records on the right. So whenever the form is filled in, the records will be displayed here. We can share this form by clicking the share button. We can copy the link and we can then paste this into a new browser tab to see how it looks if someone clicks on it. We can see the required fields, the ability to create additional directors as specified by the section widget, and the grid allowing us to add multiple answers for revenue. But only single answers per row for profit. We can also see the different questions are presented, whether the user answers yes or no to the company registration question. Back in our MyDocSafe account, the form can also be shared via email by entering the email addresses here, and then any accompanying message. Finally, we can also integrate the form onto a website. This creates a button that you can customize with your own text and place it on your website by copying this snippet of HTML code by pressing the copy button. Then, whenever someone clicks on the button, they will be taken straight to the form. If we go back to Documents, we can see the new form we just created is located here.